Hey guys, what is going on? It's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history of living in your aquarium. And today I have an unfortunate situation. Uh, cyanobacteria has taken over one of my tanks and we got to sort it out. And so I figured I'd turn the camera on and share with you guys sorting it out. So let's take a look at what's going on here because I think it's slightly unusual to the normal turn of events of cyanobacteria. But we're gonna go over what we should do in either case. Uh, so if you have blue-green algae, or as it's known, cyanobacteria, it can easily kill your fish uh, if it's out of control and in the wrong place at the wrong time, at the wrong amounts. Usually it's something that happens in your substrate, and we'll take a look at that too, and it's not really a big deal. But there are many types of cyanobacteria, and this is a bad one, unfortunately, uh, that I'm dealing with. But they all look pretty similar. So let's take a look at what's going on. All right, guys, so I noticed that the tank just looked off. It looked cloudy, and it looked very still. Uh, I have stiffidon gobies in this tank and coolie loaches, and they definitely let me know what's going on, as well as this little dwarf acara that lets me know how he's doing. Uh, he has a mate also, and I haven't seen her in a few days, and so I'm starting to worry that something happened. And lately it has been very, very hot in my state. Unseasonably hot, uh, 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And I just noticed the other night while looking, and the problem with having shelves of tanks sometimes and having very densely planted tanks is you don't always notice things that are happening, uh, especially when you have a bunch of them. But if you see this film that looks almost like a blanket um, in your tank ever, it's a bad sign. <gasps> and we've sorted out half the problem right now. So I was wondering what could have caused this to happen. And I have a pretty good guess now, unfortunately. This fish has been sitting here at least two days, I would guess. And before I started this video, there was duckweed completely all, or not duckweed, but rather um, uh, red root floaters and duckweed and water lettuce, a combo, and lily pads all over the tank. You can see how much I've dropped it down already. And as soon as I dropped it down, it revealed on the glass that there was a layer of cyanobacteria. It, it manifests as this blue-green layer. And this stuff generally is not super harmful. But that's when it's in layers of the tank like here. Like there's some in here. Um, We'll take a look at a tank in the other room, just so I can show you when it's kind of in check and not causing problems. So here's another uh, tank where it's it's not causing problems yet, uh, but it does tell me that there is some sort of gas. It might be um, methane, uh, it could be a sulfur gas, probably actually just oxygen uh, or CO2 built up in the substrate, you see that? And uh, too much nutrients, really, is what's going on here. And, of course, light. So cyanobacteria, just to give you a background, it is a bacteria, it's not an algae. A lot of people think it's an algae because it looks so similar to algae. Well, it is a blue-green algae, like my fingernails today. And it is a ancient form of life and you can see the difference between algae. I took the, 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 the water here down too. And you can see the difference between algae, which is very filamentous. And uh, usually it's either little fine dots or these sheets. And it's more of a yellowy green color. And it's not unhealthy to have. It's part of your ecosystem. It just means that you may have a little bit high phosphates or a little bit high light or a bit too much nutrients it can mean it can be from a lot of things the algae but the blue green algae what it is from almost exclusively is too much phosphates and too much organic uh debris or material 
And here I've, I've had several signs that I ignored and thought that my, my uh, snails were taking care of it. So as you can see, I've got a lot of these Malaysian trumpet snails and there's just a lot of debris in here. Um, a lot of debris. And normally this debris they would keep on top of. However, I have been kind of taking them out of here with this turkey baster as I see them in big clumps thinking, hey, there's too many of these, they must have just hatched and uh, they're, they're, uh, over, they're, they're overpopulating essentially. Now, this tank needs to be really clean water in general because of all the stiffidon gobies I have in here and because of the Cooley loaches and there's also Beckford Eye pencil fish in here that were just in spawning condition and so if you guys were watching recently you would have seen that they were doing really well these guys uh, and colored up like never before so I kinda thought the tank was doing alright but the first line of defense that we need to do now that we see that there's a problem with cyanobacteria is physically try to remove it so I can use this turkey baster, obviously I'm going to need to either bleach or boil it before using it on another tank when you know that a tank is unhealthy. The first thing we're going to want to do is get the dead fish out and um, you know what, there's actually cyanobacteria on the fish with fungi, that, that white fuzzy stuff, that's going to be a fungi and um, you know it's interesting that the shrimp and the 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 shrimp and the snails have not eaten the soft parts of the fish I don't want to get too graphic but the eyes are still intact and that's actually a bad sign obviously that doesn't smell too good either but the area where it was floating which was actually right up here is covered in cyanobacteria and as I suck this up we'll get a better look at it but this stuff is not as filamentous. It's very uh, sheet-like. It comes in clumps and sheets, and it will cover things in layers. A lot of times you'll see it on hardscape, and it'll kind of drape it like a tarp or, or whatnot. And what's happening here, we're going to take a test in real time, and, and we're going to diagnose exactly what went wrong, because I suspect that there was some cyanobacteria and that because of all of the this top was totally packed in very similar to this uh, I suspect there was not enough aeration and that the heat was trapped in with this light so low Fluval 3.0 it produces a lot of light so one it also produces light but it produces heat and what happens is sometimes your layer of all this vegetative matter has nowhere to go and it ends up building up into a layer that dies and when that layer dies you end up with stuff like this and that needs to be cleaned out of your aquarium or you need to at least have a balanced aquarium where it's going to be dealt with down in the aquarium so in a bigger aquarium than a 20 long it kind of equals out when it's on the edges of things and right here I was just doing water changes when I spotted all of this and so you can see this tanks down also and this one's probably the most healthy without any algae green or cyano and uh, it still does have this debris and layers with dead red root floater. Now red root floater kind of is notorious for dying and having layers like that. So is water lettuce though. I mean you can see the yellow. When that falls off and rots it's full of nitrates, nitrites, and ammonia eventually as it breaks down. And while if you have snails and shrimp and algae eaters and things like that they can help eat it you really need to have some sort of creature that specifically is eating the vegetative matter in order to get it down. So let's take, uh, let's take some tests here and compare because I know for, for a fact that a few of my tanks are doing really well. Well, <laughs> most of them are doing really well, but we're going to take a test with the test strip and I suspect that we're going to have nitrates very high in here from the dead fish. Um, if they weren't high before, 
they're high now. And it's not necessarily the nitrates that would cause the cyanobacteria. It's, it's a fluke or a quirk that it gets introduced on a plant or a tool or even a fish or in water. And then over time, I mean, it could even come in in spores uh, in a humid room like this. And over time, it could then settle in and uh, start growing if not caught. So now we're gonna wait for this for, for two minutes as we do the rest of things. But we're also gonna test this tank here that we know is real healthy and it had very similar parameters. So we're putting the first test right here, or the, the first test is here, the second test is here. Now, if what I think's going on is going on, this may turn pink. And I already know that this tank is cycled far well enough that the ammonia was zero. So I did the ammonia test kit with the API, uh, one of these uh, deals where you've got the, there you go, there's a nice picture. Uh, and it was, it was at zero, which is good, because that's the most harmful to your other fish. Especially when a fish dies, you can have ammonia spikes, and that alone will kill your fish. So we're going to see if the nitrates, nitrites, if those are spiked in here or not. But the first line of order is to get it all cleaned out. So obviously we're going to want to get rid of all the stuff that we can see. So it can be a tedious task, and uh, there's no way around it. I'm not going to make you guys watch the whole thing. But you're also going to want to get any debris of dead leaves um, any, you don't need to go down into the mulm if there's a mulm layer, um, but anything with a lot of algae on it and just debris like you're seeing here, we're going to siphon that out. We're going to take the water down like 90% and we're going to change it out. Um, also any of these lily pad leaves that aren't doing well, see how they're rotting too? They've all gotten either too hot for what they're used to in this tank at the top under that light and under the heat we've had lately or the cyanobacteria itself is choking it out and so you'll find lots of chunks of this you'll find probably lots of debris of other plant material and there is no creature known in our hobby that specifically likes to eat cyanobacteria unfortunately so this is something we're going to have to get rid of with a medication. But luckily, there is a very easy to access medication in the U.S. Uh, that you can get your hands on that will literally nuke all of it, that will, will kill all of it. And to, to understand how to treat this, we also need to understand uh, that it needs oxygen. It is a cyanobacteria, which means this is the bacteria that plants evolved from and so it is part plant part bacteria essentially uh, is the easiest way to think about it and it can be red or brown even um, it can be kind of a clear or milky color but usually it's going to be that bluish green color and they call it a cyanobacteria uh, and oftentimes it's Full of cyanotoxins and so while it's in your substrate it's usually not a threat to your your uh, aquatic life however when it's on surfaces like this that are growing openly in the tank it becomes much more dangerous because then it can release its cyanotoxins and cyanotoxins can have uh, necrotizing uh, properties they can have um, neurotoxins in them beyond that it might actually as sad as it is it might actually be a good idea to get rid of all of this uh, sawasertong it is it is a very easy medium for it to grow on and uh, we're gonna we're gonna treat it and we'll find out what happens but let's take a look at those test strips they should be bright pink if the nitrates were the issue Otherwise, we're going to suspect, and look at that, zero nitrates in the tank. So, that tells me that the biological filtration is still working. We have no ammonia, which is a separate test, and then we have no nitrates or nitrites. 
which we're comparing against this tank. They even have the same water hardness and everything pH wise too. So that's why I was testing with that, that tank against it is I know my tanks well. And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to drain all of this with a siphon. You guys aren't going to have to watch. And then what we're going to do is treat this with something that's called gram positive uh, bacterial antibiotics. So gram positive bacteria in general is going to be the bacteria that's air breathing, that's aerobic. And that is stuff that's, you know, cuts on your fish, um, stuff that looks like uh, it's rotting on the outside of your fish or it's causing sores or welts on your fish. That's all going to be aerobic bacteria. And in fact, the stuff that's in our sponge filters or hang off the back filters, that's all aerobic bacteria as well. And what may have happened is it, it, it may have been the cyanobacteria that actually killed that poor little female Acara. And when we're looking, we're just looking to get the big chunks of it because it's going to break down and when it dies, it will die, but the cyanotoxins will not die. So we need to get all of this stuff out. And it smells um, kind of acrid, kind of like a rotting smell or a swampy smell. And so oftentimes I'll catch it before I even see any cyanobacteria. I'll know by the smell. The harmful kinds generally have a smell that humans have evolved to detect for probably the very reason that it has toxins in it. But what we're going to do is we're going to use erythromycin, uh, which is a gram-positive uh, antibiotic, and we're going to treat the tank. So what we're going to do, you guys don't need to watch all of this, but I'm going to tell you how to treat your tank if you have a cyanobacteria outbreak, is you're going to want to try to manually remove as much as possible. If you feel like moving the fish, probably not a bad idea. But then we're going to get all new water. We're going to do like an 80 to 90% water change, however low you can go with your fish. And we're going to then turn the light off for a day or two. And what we'll fill it right back up immediately with fresh water. And then we're going to put, for every 10 gallons, we're going to put a packet of APIs uh, erythromycin in. And it also is known as Marison or... Um, there's another one uh, called Aquafix. Uh, there's lots of different names for it, but erythromycin is the active antibiotic you want. Candomycin is another, or clindamycin is another antibiotic that you could use, that humans use oftentimes. Um, but here, luckily, it's a very common one, general cure I usually have and erythromycin is the other thing I generally have. Out of all the medicines that are there, I have Icgard, um, General Cure, Methylene Blue, and erythromycin usually. So we lucked out in that case, but there's a reason why I keep these things on hand. Um, yeah, so a lot of times it'll say EM, and this one's uh, actually uh, this one's expired, and since it is an antibiotic, you want to kind of listen to that. So, I have a new pack in here, I'm sure. Yep, I always keep several packs of this stuff. And uh, this is what you're looking for right here. And it will kill that cyanobacteria within a matter of days. The thing you need to be careful with is that it can uncycle your tank. So, this filter has been exposed, and we don't need it anymore. Um, as far as we, we need it nuked and we may very well kill off the good bacteria when we do that so if you can while you're starting this process um, you're gonna put fresh water in and that water will have zero nitrates and nitrites but we don't have any of those anyways so the harmful stuff for the fish is not in here right now which is good we would uh, have more to deal with if the nitrates and the whole filtration was thrown off by this outbreak. In fact, these little stiffodons, they eat all that debris in there other than the cyanobacteria. They eat the debris of the biofilms and little micro crustaceans, algae, whatever's in here. They, they help eat that and break it down. Um, 
So what we're going to need to do is then we're going to need to take some filtration media from another tank. And so what we can do is we can, right now, we can literally start a sponge filter in another tank that's stable. So for instance, we can literally just throw a sponge filter in this tank. It's always good to have one on hand. Uh, and then leave this sponge filter in or wash it, do whatever you want with it. Um, but with antibiotics, you're going to want to treat it or clean it with bleach or something along those lines and just restart it and then use the new one to seed this whole tank. But with all these plants and all the bacteria on surfaces, some will survive and uh, hopefully it will still thrive and restart the tank with everybody in it being okay. But we're going to want to monitor the nitrates and nitrites. There should never be any nitrites and there should never be any ammonia. If there are, you're going to want to move your fish. If there aren't, you're good to go and just monitor it and make sure that it reestablishes the cycle and uh, you know just watch the amount of biological debris because it's that organic matter that's building up. I hope this is helpful and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Drop a like please or subscribe if you want to see more.